Hi, I've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday evening, September 6th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, use the information from the National Hurricane Center, your local weather office, and your local emergency management officials. Well, this is a crazy day in the tropics. We have three hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. Boy, is it the peak of the hurricane season. It sure feels like it. Let's start from left to right. This is Hurricane Katya in the Bay of Campeche. This is continuing to drift southwest and has now intensified a little bit unexpectedly today. A very tight core has developed. An airplane went in there and investigated and found a hurricane uh, much to uh, our surprise really. Uh, this has really ramped up pretty quickly and some strengthening further is anticipated as this curves down toward the southwest, likely to impact Veracruz sometime later on Friday. This is the current forecast track taking it down there uh, by Friday evening or so. Hurricane Watch is up for part of the state of Veracruz, uh, so wind is now being added to the threat of heavy rainfall and the potential for mudslides in high terrain, uh, so rainfall and now high wind, a threat to Mexico in a couple of days. We also have Hurricane Jose up in the central Atlantic. You can see the curled look to it now. A little eye has been trying to form, not cleared out, but the system is intensifying despite a little bit of shear coming out of Irma. And this shear from Irma will continue over the next few days, but some strengthening is anticipated in the current forecast. Shows this reaching Category 3 strength in a similar place to where Irma was just yesterday. And uh, could be very close again, unfortunately, to the Leeward Islands. Uh, very unfortunate devastation has already occurred in Islands like Barbuda and uh, her, another hurricane, a strong one, could be close by. There is a hope uh, that the shear from Irma and perhaps the cold wake will, will actually keep this a little bit weaker than shown. Uh, this is the visible picture from uh, just before sunset and there you might be able to get a, a hint here that there's actually a cold wake behind Irma. You would kind of expect one to be there. The water is not super deep here in terms of the warm layer and this area where the cumulus field is sort of damped sort of looks like where the north side of Irma may have upwelled some cooler water. So the hope is that as Jose moves into this region over the next few days, that uh, may tamper it down a little bit. But it's uh, worth being cautious here. Uh, if you're still in the leewards reeling from Irma, keep an eye on this guy behind as it could get uncomfortably close. And uh, some models uh, do get it into the islands, so it's uh, worth keeping a close eye on over the next few days. And it's not that far away, unfortunately. We're talking about Saturday. Irma's just going to be over here, but Jose's going to be right behind by the weekend. So we need to keep a lookout in the islands once more uh, over the next few days. And of course, we have Irma herself. Here's the close-up shot for today. Uh, amazing hurricane still, and uh, continuing its streak as a Category 5 hurricane, one of the longest-running hurricanes at Category 5 that we've observed. It has not weakened yet. It briefly uh, filled a little bit uh, overnight last night and this morning, but has since redeepened to the same intensity that it was uh, yesterday morning, and this has passed, unfortunately, right through Barbuda last night. The eye went over the island. Reports of severe devastation on that island, unfortunately. Thoughts and prayers continue to be with the island communities there, and then St. Martin was also uh, the recipient of a direct hit from Irma's eye wall this morning. As the eye continues to pass to the north of Puerto Rico now, uh, the core of the hurricane is in general missing San Juan. However, uh, on radar you can see it's a very close call here. The outer eye wall uh, kind of uh, sweeping the coast here. And I say outer eye wall because you can see the sort of double ring structure on radar. We also saw this last night. If you watched last night's video, I mentioned that this could have heralded uh, an eye wall replacement cycle. That actually did not occur, and the previous time we saw this double ring structure, an eyewall replacement cycle did not happen. Uh, the rings seemed to be too close together, and it went back to a single eyewall. We're seeing the double ring again tonight. We'll see if an eyewall replacement cycle begins. It's kind of hard to say. These things are a little fickle. Um, if one does begin, again, the primary impacts of replacement cycles are that the hurricane may briefly weaken for a time, just a little bit, not drastically, and the wind field expands, which can actually be worse overall because a larger wind field means more storm surge and a wider area of impacts and only slightly weaker peak winds. So all in all, eyewall replacements are actually kind of a, a kind of bad news, uh, but they can temporarily weaken the hurricane's top winds for a while. So we'll see if one happens here as it continues off to the west-northwest, now clearing out of the British and U.S. Virgin Islands, and again north of Puerto Rico, thankfully, with most of the core, and this will pass rather close to northern Hispaniola over the next day or so. This is the official forecast track showing again just north of uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti. 
into Thursday and into early Friday, we get into the Turks and Caicos in southeastern Bahamas. Hurricane warnings up all along the coast of Hispaniola. Again, heavy rain. The potential for mudslides and flash flooding exists throughout Hispaniola, despite the hurricane being to the north, rainfall being the primary threat there. The Turks and Caicos in southeastern Bahamas, though, storm surge up to 20 feet, the most life-threatening impact of a hurricane Try to get out of a flood-prone area and make sure you're on the highest ground possible. Again, because these are islands, they are not landlocked in large land masses, so winds from hurricanes are much more devastating here. There's not much friction to slow the winds down, so the full fury of Hurricane Irma's eye wall, which has seen winds of up to 185 miles per hour, could impact these islands uh, as early as Thursday evening. So please. Heed the advice of your local officials and stay safe if you live in these areas. Hurricane watches extend now into the northern Bahamas and for Cuba with tropical storm, tropical storm warnings already affect along the eastern tip of Cuba. You can see the forecast track is quite close to the north Cuban coast and a landfall in Cuba cannot be ruled out still as some models do still show a significant interaction with Cuba. But despite, regardless of uh, a direct landfall or not, Cuba is likely to see impacts of Hurricane Irma's core if it gets close here, which it is currently forecast to do, and heavy rain will occur regardless well away from the center, and again, mudslides and flash flooding a possibility here, and those can be life-threatening. Looking farther down into the weekend and beyond, we see this north turn toward Florida, this long-anticipated turn toward the north, and taking the hurricane very close here to the Florida Peninsula, if not directly over, the most likely path for the hurricane is near or just east of the Florida Peninsula, although some questions still remain, and there is uncertainty here. We don't know yet whether the hurricane could move directly over the Florida Peninsula, directly to the east of the peninsula, and into the Carolinas and Georgia region instead, or if it could even pass along the western coast of Florida or into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. That solution has become a little less likely today, but it cannot be ruled out, and so the Florida Panhandle should still have preparations in progress in case the hurricane does come a little farther to the left. And again, farther to the right, you have the Carolinas a straight shot here, or Georgia. And a lot of these uh, solutions now with this upper low that we've talked about over the last few days diving in over Mississippi could help pinwheel the storm a little to the left as it makes landfall. And if it does that, you very quickly get inland regions of Georgia and the Carolinas into rainfall and wind threats. And this is a something that needs to be watched carefully and do understand it's important to realize that even if the hurricane comes up the spine of Florida, yes, the land interaction would weaken the storm and the winds, but the water threat the surge coming around the storm into the Georgia and South Carolina coastline and the heavy rain inland would remain threats regardless of whether or not the hurricane moves directly over the Florida Peninsula. So there are threats coming farther north than Florida, almost regardless of what happens here. Could the system still escape east of Florida and out to sea? It's possible, but at this point, unlikely. A direct impact to the United States, unfortunately, is likely at this point. Exactly who gets the worst conditions from Irma, we still don't know. Just a shift of 50 miles to the left, 50 miles to the right could make a huge difference to Miami, to people like Naples, Fort Myers, and Tampa. You know, 50 miles off the coast and you, you escape the worst of the weather. But if it's on shore here, it could be devastating. So this is something that should be taken seriously. The best course of action you have is to be prepared, have a plan ready in case it comes your way in a couple days. If it looks like it's going to hit, then you know what to do. You know where you're going. If you're in any, any evacuation zone that's already been ordered to leave, please follow those orders and make sure you're safe. Getting off of the keys is a good thing since there's only one road out. And uh, just take the safe side on this one. This is not a storm you really want to mess with. It's extremely powerful, likely to remain extremely powerful. Conditions in this particular part of the Atlantic are ripe for major hurricanes and it is unlikely to weaken significantly unless it moves over Cuba for a substantial period of time, which is possible, but at this point it's safe to assume that this will be a strong hurricane as it approaches Florida and we've already seen some of the damage it can do in the Leeward Islands and the Virgin Islands. So do take this seriously. The question does arise, uh, when could this start weakening? When it finally turns north, if it say, uh, Mrs. Florida to the right, what could you guys expect in Georgia and the Carolinas? Well, the good news is that the forecasted upper level pattern here, if you have the hurricane just east of Florida, there's this upper trough we've been talking about coming into the southeastern United States. This is helping to steer it north, but it's also imparting a southwesterly flow aloft 
over this part of the country. And this would start imparting wind shear on the storm and depositing dry air to the west of the storm that would start getting wrapped in over time. And both of these things would likely weaken Irma even if it stays offshore of the Florida Peninsula. And as it moves north, you would likely see a weakening hurricane. However, that is not to say it would not remain very dangerous. We could be seeing, for example, you know, a hurricane that still has winds of well over 100 miles per hour moving up into this section of the coastline, if not stronger. Uh, it could be a Category 3 or 4 here. It absolutely could. And remember, though, that the water is still a big problem. And even if the system were to weaken, the storm surge generated by a Category 5 hurricane can persist. So even if the winds die down, the surge can last. All that water that was pushed originally into the Bahamas and Florida would continue pushing up the coast, even if the hurricane's winds die down a little bit due to the shear in the dry air. So it's important to realize the water will remain a big threat and won't that water threat won't really change much even if the hurricane begins to weaken a bit as it moves north. So that's something to, to be very careful of here. One more thing I want to talk about that I think is very important. This is for all you folks who don't really know a lot about meteorology but are just here listening, wondering if the storm is going to hit you specifically. You'll see a lot of maps. A lot of you like to see the maps that I'll put on my site and other maps like it, where you'll see the different models showing different tracks you know, toward Florida, near Florida, plots like this. I urge strong caution in using these maps. Uh, I've heard already of people making decisions based on maps like this, thinking that, oh, look, all the models have the system along the east coast of Florida. I'm safe over here. Or, oh, they're all up into Georgia and South Carolina. I'm safe in North Carolina. This is false. It's very important that you realize that there is a lot that goes into the model data that the forecasters use to forecast the storm, and maps like this can be misleading. I put them out there because there are people who need them and want to use them and know how to use them, but if you don't know what you're doing, these can mislead you, and this portrays confidence in a track near the east coast of Florida that does not exist. In reality, there is a much wider area that could potentially receive the track of Irma here, and it is important that you realize that these plots do not tell you what's going to happen. So please be very careful when using these. I don't want people to get misled. Pay attention to the National Hurricane Center forecast. Your local weather office and your local emergency management in your county, they will tell you what your risk is. They will tell you they know it's their job to give you information that you can use to keep yourself safe. Please take advantage of it. It's there for you. Use it, but don't use stuff that can mislead you. Use the official sources. All right, guys, stay safe. Uh, we'll continue to track Irma, Katya, and Jose over the coming days. Busy hurricane season. Stay safe, everyone. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.